it has nothing to do with being Jewish. It has to do with Yahweh dwelling next to you. Yes. A visible, loving, tangible reminder. Yes. And we cannot just merely push that away as if it's not from the Father. Say, mm -hmm. Yahweh, man. Hallelujah. You're good. Your mercy endures forever. Your praise will be in my lips Beautiful. continually. Beautiful. I will praise Yahweh at all times. Beautiful. His praise shall continually yes. be in my mouth. Yes. Yes. And once a week, he comes next to you. He comes right next to your seat, right next to your aisle, right next to your row. And he's waiting to see how you respond. Yep. That's what the Torah service is all about. Uh -huh. Waiting for the people of Israel to respond in the way that he, that he desires. When the eternal answer says, I'm dwelling in your midst. And we open the Torah and we see and hear and read the word. What do we do when we open the Torah? We don't only hear the word. We don't only experience the word. We touch it. Touch it. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be led by the ruach. Go to First Yochanan. Oh, we touch it. Yes. First Yochanan. We touch it. See, in religion, that's right. And once a year, the religionist, the professional hireling, reads Luke chapter two. Behold, I bring you good tidings of great, of great joy that shall be for all people unto you this day is born in the city of David a savior, which is Christ the Lord. In Israel, this is the people's house, this is the people's pulpit, this is the people's Torah, and the Torah comes to you because it is in you. Thy word, David said, have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. In what other religion, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, what other religion does the word leave the religious edifices of man-made hierarchy and come to you? Just like in scripture, mm -hmm. the father sent his son to you. Yes. He came to you. He came to you. Mm. And what happened when he came to, the, to many of our Jewish brethren? He came to his own, but his own received him not. Mm. Doesn't that happen during the Torah service? He comes to you. But many of us think it's too, it's too, it's too, <gasps> it's too Jewish. Mm. Come on now, it's time to, time to yeah, confess. It's true. Yeah. Confess your faults one to another that you may be it's healed. True. Confess. You rather just sit at home in a home fellowship where no one's got a Torah and no one forces you to kiss it. Let's be honest. I know I watch your faces. Same way you watch mine, I don't watch yours. But like last week, Yahweh takes takes morning. What morning? The ninth of the fifth month, and turns it to a moment. To oh, yes. Yes. He takes that understanding of a religious viewpoint, mm -hmm. thinking that it's somehow unscriptural and I'm more comfortable in a home setting where no one's forcing me to, forcing me to do this. And it, and Yahweh wants to change it. He wants he wants to take that morning that 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 eschewed view, shall we say, and turn it into a righteous Yeshurun. A righteous, straight view of what that thing is all about. Hallelujah. We're bringing it to you. It doesn't belong to the professionals. In this, in this place, I guess I'm the professional. Even though I'm not a professional, I don't have any ties or sweets. I can barely wear my belt sometimes. We come to you and say, you, it's your word. It's your, it's your Yeshua. It's your Savior. He's your personal Savior. And this is his personal word. Yahweh says, it's, it's all a, like the politics. They say, well... It's all about the economy, silly. In Messianic Israel, we say, it's all about Yahweh dwelling with his people. Yes. It's not about what you understand, whether you're comfortable, whether you can get it in your spirit, whether, whether you have a lot to learn. It's like, do you get the point, brothers and sisters? I want to dwell with you. What better rehearsal, what better reminder that the word of Yahweh will dwell with us forever in the Atid Lavo, and now I'm coming to your seat, to your row. Will you embrace me, or will you do what you sometimes do Monday through Friday and let this thing pass by without an embrace, without a hug, and without even a consideration? Interesting. Yahweh comes to dwell with us, and he's watching how we react. But talk among in the middle of his people. And can we talk? How many know that I was Jewish before I was Messianic Israel? 
When I first got saved, I didn't want any part of it. I wanted to him, to hers, and get the heck out. All right? Isn't that most places? You sing two hymns, two hers, and you're gone. <laughs> I'm probably nervous. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> He's a good man. I love that guy. Hallelujah. You with me? By the clock. So as a Jew, if I had trouble with it, I know you do it. Don't look so holy, clock. honey. <laughs> because I had trouble with it. Give me some water, please. Ruch Hashem Yahweh. It's getting hot in here. You're not free I'm getting yet. nervous about what I'm about to say. You're not free yet, Zimbabwe. But Ruch Hashem Yahweh. If I was Jewish and I, have, I was having problems with it, I can only imagine my brothers and sisters who, who, who struggle with it. <laughs> but now look at First Yochanan. I was taking you to First Yochanan. I was taking you to First Yochanan. I was taking you to First Yochanan. Okay. Uh, one, one. What was from Bereshit, the book of Bereshit, the beginning? What we have heard, what do we do in the Torah service? We hear Bereshit through Devarim. What we have seen with our eyes, what did the Talmudians see with their eyes? Yeshua come in the flesh. The Torah come in the flesh to dwell and live among them, even as he had in the first covenant. What we have looked upon, what our hands have handled, all things concerning the Var Chaim. That's what the Torah service is all about, brothers and sisters. It allows you, it gives you the license, the freedom, the ability to taste, see, hear, and yes, even handle the word of life. What other religion gives you that opportunity? We bring the Torah right to you, brothers and sisters, so you can handle the word of life. Isn't that what First Yochanan says Yeshua was all about? Right. Coming to dwell in the midst of Israel, allowing Israel to touch him, to hear him, to experience him, to feel him, see me, feel me, touch me, as Roger Daltrey used to say. Only, only a Messianic Israel. So when, you, when we bring that Torah to you next Shabbat, please, please be delivered from the lemon juice oh, experience. Please, yes. I see some of you when the Torah comes, you're like this. Be for real, man. <laughs> Is he going to bite me or what? Harry's looking, I better kiss him. <laughs> <laughs> Bernice is looking, I better, I better kiss him. She's yeah, looking. it's true, bro. I used to be like that. <laughs> Brother. Oh, I'm sister, free. Sister, now he's in your man. I'm free. The day of redemption is at hand. The prophets who desire to see the things that you see and have not seen them, to hear the things that you hear and have not heard them. The day of your deliverance is at hand. Look up. Your redemption draws nigh. Look up. And we bring the Torah to you to remind you of the good and perfect things Yahweh has for you. I'm free. Because Yahweh wants to be betoch amo. Betoch amo. Betoch amo. In the middle of his people. Not any people, in the middle of his people. Now go back with me. Now isn't that what we do during, stay there. Isn't that what we do in the Torah service? We bring out what was from the beginning. Hallelujah. We allow you and I to hear it. We allow each other to see it. We allow each other to look at it close up. We allow our hands to handle it. I love that part. Hello? Yes. Like Carrie said many times when she gives testimony, we're special here at the Miami Beach Israel yes. Revival. Amen. The microphone doesn't belong to Rabbi Moshe, it yes. belongs to Yahweh. We're In the church, they don't even give you the microphone. No, they don't. How many times have you said that? They don't give you the microphone. Uh uh. Oh, we can't trust them. Why not? They're full of Yahweh's Ruach. They're Yahweh's yeah. people. He dwells in their midst. So if you have a testimony or a word, it's his. He, he, he's the king, he gets the glory. But how many times has Carrie said, in those other systems, they don't even give you the microphone? No, they don't. Because in Messianic Israel, those who have experienced Yeshua's salvation and return to their roots as Yisroel, handle the word and all things concerning Yahweh allows you to handle it. Yes. He's not afraid of being what? No. He's not afraid of being tested. No. He doesn't, want, he doesn't allow us to tempt him. 
but we can test him. He says, tithe, test me. Go ahead and test me. Yes. You should be testing Yahweh because that means you're handling the word of life. It's a living reality in your life. You're putting into practice the principles that he tells you will give you health, prosperity, and abundance, and overcoming. That's why you're Israel. You are overcome. You and I are overcomers. Yes. Amen? Amen. There's not one person in this congregation that stays sick. My wife was sick. She didn't stay sick. Marsha was just sick. We prayed for her. She didn't stay sick. Negative. I went to the cardiologist. I said, you got two hours to do this garbage, Bubba. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I got a new heart about 15 years ago. I don't need your MRI. I got Yeshua JD, Yeshua the Jewish doctor. Amen. Amen. I got a Jewish specialist, a heart specialist. Yes. Cardiologist. We don't stay sick. An everlasting cardiologist. Because we handle the word of life. See, see the difference between being an Israelite and being in those other religious systems? You come in here and handle the mic. You handle the Torah. You handle the scroll. You handle the blessing. You, you're, part, you're part of the dwelling of Yahweh among his people. You're part of it. Part of it. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Right. And, and you, don't, you, you don't sit and view and look at things from a distance while the paid professional is doing his paid professional activity. You and I need, you need to understand the significance of the Torah service. Yahweh, it's a call to involvement. That's, that's good. I like that. I like that. It's a call to involvement. It's a call to tithe. It's a call to, to sing. It's a call to worship. Handle the word of life. Are you with me? Yes. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh has come to live betoch amo in the midst of his people. Go now with me, please, to Tehillim. Tehillim. Tehillim, chapter 2. Tehillim, chapter 2. Verse 12. Well, Rabbi, I'm going to ask the law what you, what you thought, what you, what, 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 what you spoke about. I'm going to ask him. Can we talk? Don't waste your time. Don't ask him nothing. Because what I'm saying is from him, and I'm going to prove it to you in a second. Some things you don't pray about. Some things you just obey. Right. Now, watch this. In Psalm 2, verse 12, Yahweh says, Ready? Yes. Are you ready? Nashku bar. You ever hear of a bar mitzvah? The son becomes a son of the covenant. Bar, son, bane. The Hebrew word is either bane or bar. Amen? Nashku bar. Kiss the son. Listen. Nashku is an imperative command. It is an imperative ongoing command, meaning that all Israelites have no choice. Amen. I don't want to have a choice. I want to do it. Kiss the son. When you understand that the word of Yahweh is the middle pillar of Yahweh, that the two trees of life are the Father Amen. and the Ruach, and the word of Yahweh is the middle manifestation of Yahweh, and, and, and that what you're doing is you are responding to the imperative commandment to kiss Nashku Bar, not just anybody. You're not just kissing anybody. You're kissing the son of Yahweh. And Yahweh says, I love you. I'm going to dwell next to you. I'm going to get Roberto or Ted or someone to bring me to you, to remind you of my closeness to you, my heart for you, my love for you. Now, kiss me. Don't pray about it. Nashku Bar. I believe that the entire Torah service, that traditional Judaism should not take credit for that. What they do in orthodox and conservative synagogues should not take credit from what our master initiated. Amen. Our master initiated this ceremony. That's right. Amen. Because he is the only kind of Torah that is called the son of Yahweh. Amen. <laughs> Amen. In Jewish understanding, the, the, the word of Yahweh or the Torah of Yahweh was called Yahweh's son. Did you know that? Before Yeshua was ever born, the people of Israel called Yahweh's word his own son. Say it with me. Kiss the sun. Well, I don't want a rabbi. It's too what? Ready? It's too Jewish. No problem. Here's what's going to happen. Kiss the sun, lest he be enraged. 
and you perish in the way. Well, Rabbi, that, that, that doesn't mean that I have to kiss the Torah. It means that I have to love Yeshua. Yes. On the Pashat, it means you have to love Yeshua. But on the Remez, the hint, the hint is I've got to love his word. I've got to love the fact that he's bringing his word to me, yes. that he's, he's bringing it to me to handle, to taste, touch. to touch. touch it. Yes. Touch it. To touch the things of Bereshit, yes. the things of the Garden of Eden, the things of Melchizedek, the things of Mount Moriah, the things of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. My goodness, they're coming to me. They're coming right to me. They're coming next to me. And all I've got to do is, is to respond to that imperative command. We couldn't touch it Here's the song. You don't like the color of the Torah? You don't like the color? You prefer burgundy? No problem. Look at the word in here, and we know the word was what? Made flesh. Yes. So you don't like the color. Do you like Yeshua's flesh? Amen. It was crucified for you. Amen. Thank you. Then kiss the sun. You see the beauty of Hebraic understanding? Mm -hmm. There's how many levels of Hebraic interpretation? Four. 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 Pashat, Ramez, Drash, and so. Sov. So on the Pashat, it's no kiss Yeshua. On the Remez, it's... Come on, you can't separate Yeshua because in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with Yahweh, the Word was Yahweh, and the Word was made flesh, and here is the cover of flesh. Oh, yes, we are in a highly symbolic understanding of who Yahweh is. When this symbolism leads you to understand that Yahweh dwells with his people, you'll love the Torah parade. You'll love it. You'll, you'll, you'll trade in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade for this one. <laughs> you'll trade in, trade in the Rose Bowl Parade for this one. <laughs> you'll trade in the Orange Bowl Parade for this one. That's right. It's what it represents. It's the symbolism of what it represents. And what does it represent? Yahweh's desire to live where? Right in the middle of his people. Wow. What an Elohim we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kiss the sun. And if you don't, he, he will be angered and you will perish in the way. For soon his wrath will be kindled. Blessed are all those taking what? Refuge in him. You know what you're doing when the Torah comes to you and you don't look around with Google eyes and see who's looking and who's not. And you go, oh, my word, my word, Hallelujah. Yeshua, yes. my word. My word clothed in flesh yes. underneath. It's from the beginning. Yes. Voracious, right there, is clothed in flesh. Yes. Voracious, devouring, by midbar, yes. is clothed in Yeshua. The word became flesh. Yes. And do all the yes. Who let the Torah go by next week? Yahweh says, Nashkubah, kiss the sun. Can't pray about it. And believe me, this was tough for me. It was tough. And I thought it was idolatry. It was not easy. Being, I'm being honest with you. Turn your neighbor and say, he's being honest with you. It was not easy. And I, I went to yeshiva. I grew up speaking Hebrew. I was bar mitzvah. If it wasn't easy for me, brothers and sisters, I know it was tough for some of you. And there are groups, there are even sacred name groups who think we're legalists because we kiss the Torah. Mm. We won't mention any names because we don't do that here. Right, I mean, that's right. Why not? Sometimes. With me. With me. There's a couple of groups in Missouri <laughs> who think that, well, Rabbi Moshe is cool because he uses the true name. But he teaches his people to kiss the Torah. He wears ropes. He teaches them. He teaches the women to wear hair. I mean, they're one hundred percent against us. Why? Because we kiss the Torah. So we, now our opponents are not just in the church. Our opponents are in the sacred name movement. So be careful when you read sacred name literature, because they're not Torah followers. They're Torah talkers. They talk time. They talk sacred name, but they don't want to follow all the ways of Yahweh. It's called picking and choosing. Right. Uh -huh. right. Yahweh's desire listen, is to live the Toch Amo in the midst of his nation. He said, blessed are all those taking refuge and comfort in him. 
Nash Kumar. When Yahweh is said to be Betoch Amo, or in the midst of his people, or in between his people, or amongst his people, listen, that word, Betoch Amo, can be translated dwelling in the midst, among, or in between. I say that again. In the midst, among, or in between. And isn't that what we experience through the Ruach HaKodesh? Yeshua coming in the Torah service? Yeshua coming in between us, in between where? In between the believers in this camp and the believers in that aisle. Right in between. Hello? Now look up that word when you get home. Betoch. It could mean in the middle. Or it could mean between. Betoch. Between. Baruch Hashem Yahweh. In the middle. In the middle. Between. Hallelujah. Or next to. It is an imperative. Or among. Among. In the middle. Or between. When we, when we bring out the Torah from the ark, we are reminded that Yahweh is between us. We're not here by ourselves. He's, he's in the middle of our speech, in the middle of our songs, in the middle of our worship, in the middle of our, our head coverings. He's pleased with women.